looking for my glasses here. They're out in the other room. Hope everybody's having a fantastic week. Uh, I had just ended um, a slew of interviews and recordings that you're going to hear here in the near future. And we got some good stuff coming up uh, that I'd like to talk about for a second before, before we start talking about scholarships. And clearly we have a lot to talk about. I also have some uh, news there right now. Um, Pam may be having uh, technical issues. So we're, we're still waiting on Pam. Uh, but I do know that there's a bunch of stuff that we need to talk about when it comes to scholarships. Happy to talk about that on my part. Pam and I have talked about a lot of this in the past. So I won't be able to bring her level of knowledge, but we're still going to have a conversation about this spring, about scholarships and about college planning. But even before we, we do that, let's talk about some dates coming up on the calendar. First of all, next Friday, next Friday, I just found this out yesterday. Gertrude and I are working on this right now. In fact, uh, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to be talking to her about the fact that next Friday we have a, uh, uh, a, um, uh, we have a, uh, event, um, that we're just found out about that we're taking part of Podbean. They're, they're, a, a great group that, um, allows podcasters to up, upload their podcast and, and do what we do. Uh, Podbean is having a personal finance week and there's going to be a bunch of stuff. We're going to have links to all that next week, but we're going to perform a live version of a recording of the show. By the way, you're going to hear people back here through the wall working on my bathroom. And as you know, when you get contractors here, you can't not. So we're going to have some knocking on the knocking on the on the wall by the way feel free to say hi uh we'll also take your questions throughout the day so it is um it's a it's uh interactive uh especially since we've got no idea um and hopefully pam's doing all right but uh hey Brittany, glad you're here with us so uh uh but anyway that's next friday it's going to be 3 30 eastern time I believe uh, it'll be OG, Len, Paula, and I not doing a live show, but, and we've done this before. We did this once on CastBox, but doing a live, uh, uh, you can watch us make the show. So in some ways it's pretty boring because you'll see how much, how, how very little actually ends up being a part of the podcast and how many breaks we take and explanations and stuff going on and looking stuff up, but you'll see the whole behind the scenes, how the sausage is made. That's going to be next uh, Friday. And we will have a link to that in the stacker. We'll also have it in the basement. It's going to be, um, it's going to be uh, uh, pretty fun. It's going to be a great time. I can't wait to do it. We just got added, added to it. Paula is on another panel, Paula Pant from afford anything on another panel. So for those of you wondering who I am and what's going on, I'm Joe Saul Hi, co-host of the Stacking Benjamins podcast. I'm here in uh, my mom's basement where we do our recordings and um, we're going to talk scholarships today. You know, let's talk about a few things. This, 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 this month, by the way, um, there is, th this is a big, huge month for scholarships. It is an absolutely huge month for scholarships. And, uh, sorry, had to answer that. We're, 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 uh, we're trying to help Pam with her technical stuff, uh, uh, get going. But so, so let's talk about scholarships. April and May are really important dates for scholarships. If you're looking for scholarships, these two months are the two months with that you're going to find that scholarships start to go bye-bye. So if you're somebody who's looking for money, this is the perfect time to be paying attention to scholarshipville. Now, what a lot of people do when they look for scholarships is they start with a bunch of the national scholarships and then they work down, right? don't want to work that way at all. You want to start off with something and I'm going to pretend because I don't know where you're starting from. I'm going to pretend like you don't know anything about the scholarship search, but the first thing to do, no matter what you do, when it comes to money, 
is to look at the institutions where you may be going, which means you're going to fill out something called the FAFSA. And the FAFSA is the federal application for, for student aid. And the FAFSA then uh, is the application to the school that then trickles through everybody. And, and, you know, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is, is colloquial. Um, uh, uh, is see, I did it again. It's anecdotal, not colloquial. It's anecdotal. So, um, and I use those words interchangeably and I have people that tell me that those don't mean what they think they mean. And what's funny is I know it and I still use the wrong words, but, um, uh, 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 but I think it helps us understand the way that, that, that it works. We're filling out one form. That form is for not just the institution, which may also, by the way, have another form, but it also is for the feds and it's also for the state, right? So um, you're going to apply the FAFSA, it's going to go to the school. The school's going to go, well, we don't want to give you any money until the state gives you money. The state goes, we don't want to give you any money until the federal government gives you money, right? And then they work their way backwards. So then you're applying for the Pell Grant, which is a grant. Now, there's, there's some terms that you want to know that I didn't know when I went to school. And one of those terms one of those differences is what's the difference between a, between a, a, a grant and a loan. And it's a huge difference. A loan you have to repay. A grant is money that you are given that you do not have to repay. So we want grants before loans if possible, right? So the Pell Grant is actually what the FAFSA is looking at. That's, that's the number one place. Everybody goes for money. Very difficult to get a Pell Grant. But then beyond that, then it gets passed to whatever aid that the state has, gets passed then to the to the school and whatever aid that the school has. And these are need-based aid programs uh, that you're looking at first. Now, for a lot of people, you're not going to get need-based aid. It depends on the year and how competitive it is, but you might not get any. But that doesn't mean there isn't money available there still is for everybody in the United States, there's something called an unsubsidized Stafford loan. And the unsubsidized loan program, the unsubsidized government loan program is the place where I would start before going to private places. Do not, do not go to private uh, uh, companies like uh, uh, Chase and Citigroup have loan programs that are, are extra, they're called plus loans, uh, parent loans. Um, don't look at parent loans. Don't look at other loans until you look at these unsubsidized loans. And I've, and I've heard people say, well, we just went to the bank and took out. A, I would I would very seriously look first at that unsubsidized student loan. When it comes to filling out the FAFSA, you're going to see a lot of stuff about how to fill out the FAFSA form. And uh, are there some tricks you can do? Yeah. There are some tricks you can do. The problem is, is that, you know, and uh, Paul and I were having this discussion yesterday. A lot of people go through a lot of planning that has very little efficacy. It has, uh, you're going to do a lot of work and not get very far. If, if you're, unless you, your gut tells you that you may be on the line, right? That you're, that you're close. And for help with this too, I would talk to the financial aid people at the school, you know, Pam, who runs our scholarship program, Pam knows as, as much as anybody that uh, talking to those people and asking them, what do you think that I should do? Do you think that I'm close? Fantastic. Now, all financial aid people at schools aren't created equal, but, but unless you think you're on the line going through all kinds of tricks to decide uh, where you put your money so that you get more scholarships. A lot of the time, not, not, not worth the time guys. Uh, but there are things. So I'll, I'll talk through a few of these. Number one is money that's in a child's name is taxed. If we think about we think about this process like we think about taxes um, and college is something you want to live through. Right. Um, and you want to pay as little to get as much as you possibly can while still making sure that you're paying your fair share. 
the problem is, is your fair share is defined by what, uh, by who's paying attention to the rules and who isn't. You definitely want to play by the rules, but here's the way the rules are. The rules say that college should be the number one thing that's on a kid's mind, right? They should have nothing else on their mind besides school. So for that reason, money in a child's name gets taxed, meaning it is expected to be used for college much more than money in a parent's name. Money in a parent's name, there is, uh, you're allowed to have an emergency fund. You should have some money available for the family. And then to a much lower percentage than it is for the, for the student, parents are also taxed, but at a much lower rate. So between having money in junior's name and having money in a parent's name, Generally, we want money in a parent's name. That's number one. Um, it could affect your aid package. Number two is there are assets that count and assets that don't count. And this is where, you know, uh, uh, sometimes whole life insurance salespeople will tell you to sock money into an insurance plan. Can that work? Absolutely, it can work. However, all insurance plans aren't created equal. Putting your investments inside of an insurance policy and then ripping that money out, you have to, it, it gets very complicated. Can it work? It can absolutely work. People often will tell you that it doesn't work. It does work. The insurance salesman uh, in this case um, potentially can get it right. However, as you and I both know, that industry is so filled with fees and expenses and products that you maybe don't need that I'm not sure that the ends justify the means. So, so hiding money in insurance policies, probably not. The, uh, you can also use 529 plan money for college. You can use Roth IRA money for college, both of those without penalty. Uh, the problem that I have with using Roth IRA money for college is this. I really like that, really like that money for retirement. So even though it's kind of a Swiss army knife, um, I kind of like to separate it and have my Roth money be retirement money and my 529 money be, be college money. Um, uh, but I've also found that if you've done a great job of saving into a Roth and you haven't saved any money into a 529 plan, having your money in your Roth IRA could be could be a, a, a great play. So anyway, the, uh, I kind of bridge topics there, but there's two different things you want to look at. Who's who has the money, where the money's at, what what's the bucket that you're going to pull from? Uh, so there's a few things and actually the 520, the, the 529 plan, Evan is not bad. Uh, 529 plan often in mom and dad's name, right? Uh, not in the kid's name. So 529 will, it can be taxed at the lower level, not at the, not, not at the, the, the higher level. 529, not a bad way to save for college. You know, I hear people rip it sometimes. I'm, I'm definitely a fan of putting money in, in, in the 529 What's cool about a 529 plan too, Evan, by the way, is this. Let's say that you have multiple children. Child number one doesn't need the money. They get a scholarship. And child number two uh, then, then can use that money. You can change the beneficiary. Then you can change it to your name if none of your kids use it. So you can use it for some accredited program to pay for school. So I like that as well. Um, but then I also, I also like this, which is that if your children then have children, you can then then change the ownership, make make your kids the owner, make the uh, grandchild the uh, beneficiary, and you have this education trust, the Evans Family uh, Education Trust with a 529 plan without having all the expensive trust features that you would need to have elsewhere, right? So, so, uh, uh, there's that. Uh, Rena says, I wish the IRS let's put kids portion of stimulus in the Roth IRA. You know, something that, 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 um, who was it that, uh, proposed this? It was the guy, it was the hedge fund manager, Bill Ackerman, I think Bill Ackerman, who said that we could save a lot of money if just when kids were born as U S citizens, they got X amount of money from the government. And it was a, a, immediately put into like this retirement plan. Right. I don't know, and that that would take a lot of political wrangling to have happen. But um, you take a look at that type of a plan and how much money we ultimately save the government by doing that uh, in a lot of different ways by 
by changing up the way that people receive money and just give it to them right away and then grow that money and uh, could end up, could end up being great. A uh, Tyson and Upma ultimately does count against your kid versus having it in your name. Now here's the rule guys, cause you gotta be really careful. People auditing this, it doesn't happen often, but if it does, I don't want you to say Joe said, right? Here's the way that this works. Money, if you have money in your child's name, it can't be spent on food, clothing, shelter, and, and use that money. That's dad's job. That's Tyson's job to get that done. But anything beyond that, you can, uh, you can have, uh, take money out of their account. So kid goes to a birthday party, buys a present, you take money out of their account to spend on it, or you buy it and you reimburse yourself from their money. That's a mechanism by which you can start removing money from the kid's account if you don't want them to have the UPMA. I like keeping it in an account that has maybe you as the owner and then them as a beneficiary. So if you pass away, then it, it goes right to them. Uh, but keeping it in your name um, uh, then makes it taxed less when it comes to getting financial aid. UTMA is the is is the the uniform uh, transfer to minors in some states it's called uniform gift to minors act. Let me tell you why this was put in place. People knew that not just for this reason, but also for general income tax reasons, this money will be taxed a lot less in a kid's name than it will be taxed if it's in your name, right? So so here's what happened. You had these millionaires that billionaires taking money and putting uh, huge sums of money into their kid's name. Now the kids at the lower tax bracket, when that money has income or capital gains tax, whatever it might be, well, capital gains tax is a flat tax, but if there's any money that's made on that kids taxed at a lower rate than I am in a lot of cases. So giving money to your kids and then taking it back when you needed it became this giant tax racket that the rich did. The government said, it's a big old loophole. We're going to close. We're going to close it by calling it uniform transfer to minors or uniform gift to minors. And here's the deal. Exactly what I just told you. Food, clothing, shelter, those had to come from dad. Everything else can come from the kid. So kid goes to a movie, take their, their movie ticket, their movie, you know, popcorn. What is that? $87 to go see a movie now. Does anybody do that anymore? But I, I, I went to my first movie again last week since COVID started. Fantastic time. The father. We may or may not talk about it on a show next week, but the um, uh, overall, when it comes to to uh, taking money back, you just got to be careful and 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 then leave to leave a paper trail. Uh, Evan says so. Even if they uh, are listed as beneficiary, tax to parents because the parent is the owner. Remember, kids not the owner. Parent is the owner, Evan, which which makes that uh, which makes that. Uh, uh, pretty nice. Uh, 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 Jacob, assuming one goes to the NBA, no one gets a full ride. I missed the first part. Uh, Jacob says, let's do this. I got three boys, five-year-old, three-year-old, 10-month-old. It's been a hell of a year working from home. How much should we set aside each month to 529s? Yeah. And then we get to the NBA piece, right? Uh, hopefully they go to the NBA and uh, you don't have to worry about it. We, we are our friends here in town. One of our one of our good friends, their son is a uh, major league uh, is a major league pitcher, and so this this uh, guy uh, makes tons of money and got a full ride all the way through college. And certainly, we all we all hope for that, don't we? But assuming that's not the case, Jacob, here's here's what you want to do: find a place like SavingForCollege.com, target a few schools. And put money away uh, into a 529 based on that. So start with your target, work backwards. Now, let me tell you, there's a few things that people get wrong here. The first thing is they will tell you what it costs in total to go to school, that it's going to be things like, uh, you know, room and board. Um, uh, uh, so the food plan is going to be a part of it. Sometimes when they talk about total cost of college, if you're looking at that, they're going to talk about like flights or driving home and back, like transportation, home and back. A lot of that is going to be cost transfer. And I found this out when Nick and Autumn went to college that, uh, that my son, I paid for Nick's 
food plan at the University of Texas. Well, he had a food plan here at home. And I found that while, uh, while things were more expensive at school, I, I had this huge surplus of money going on at home because Nick's not on my food bill anymore. Kid was on the swim team, uh, rode his bike from, 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 uh, Austin to Anchorage, uh, with this group, the Texas 4,000 raising money for cancer research. Kid can eat, not, not a huge guy. Kid can eat just a furnace. Uh, and so I actually made money on that food plan or didn't make money, but you know what I mean? I saved, I saved money. So set a target, maybe set it with the tuition only use an expected inflation rate of like 7% in the calculator at saving for college, or there's calculators all over the internet and work it back. Sadly, what you're going to find is that the numbers are going to still be, be pretty big. Um, and then you decide how much of this do we want to cash flow and how much of this do we, do we want to save ahead of time? Because obviously you've got other goals and maybe setting $500 a month for three kids is not in the cards. It's not something that, uh, that, that, that you can afford to do. So if not, maybe you save half of that and you all start having some good discussions about what percentage is junior going to pay for, you know, versus what is, uh, what's dad going to pay for. So the, the, the answer is, uh, I don't mean for it to be convoluted, but the answer is going to be based on values and your target and how far away you are. Uh, and then just use a good calculator to go from there. Also, um, you don't have to use a 529 plan in your state, which is awesome. You can use 529 plans that are, that are uh, in any state. So uh, some of my favorite 529 plans, I like the uh, Utah plan through Vanguard. I like the Alaska plan through uh, T. Rowe Price. Um, I like the New Hampshire plan through Fidelity. Um, there are a few others that I really like and savingforcollege.com again, not, not a sponsor of the show. I, I don't get paid to say anything about them. Don't know anybody there. I just know that I've used the heck out of that site myself. And, uh, and it's a great, uh, great place to look at your 529 plans. I also know that Morningstar has started rating 529 plans against each other. So you can go to morningstar.com to see, to see some of that work. Um, but scholarship wise, to get back on April and May, this is a big month, guys, for scholarships. So if you're searching for scholarship money, there are a lot of deadlines that are happening right now when it comes to scholarship. If you have a senior, you should already have the FAFSA filled out. If you don't, you want to fill it out ASAP. A lot of the money with the FAFSA is already gone. If you have a junior in high school you or a sophomore, you want to start studying the FAFSA and how it, because it's intimidating. It looks huge. Uh, I handled it. You can handle it. I'll tell you what you do. You take it like an elephant. You see it one bite at a time. I stopped looking at the entire form and I just looked at the next line. How do I answer this? How do I answer this? How do I answer this? And if you know the form ahead of time, it also makes it easier to know where your uh, spots are that you might not be able to, um, might not be, uh, be in the best place uh, money-wise like we talked about earlier. Uh, Kimberly, thank you. Just hanging out, entertaining myself, talking about college. This is one of my favorite topics, by the way. And we don't get to talk about it on the show that much because it's only a, a segment of our audience, right? It's not our entire audience that, that is, that is there. Also, uh, Evan, you bring up a good, uh, a good point, which is you also need to look at your state plan because your individual states might give you a state, uh, tax break. Now, as an example, when I was living in Michigan there for a couple of years and before we moved to Texas, the first time uh, the, 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 the Michigan plan was, was a very good one through TIA CREF. But on top of the fact that it was a good plan, we also got the state tax break. I know some other places have tax breaks, but their plans stink. So you really want to look at if I don't have any great plan options, forego the tax deduction, excuse me, forego the tax break because the state tax break is not going to be that huge, right? It's going to be a pretty small percentage um, uh, of the money you put in there. So if you put $4,000 in there and you get a 4% you know, tax break, don't get me wrong. It's not nothing. It definitely is something. But, um, but if I 
get charged that in fees over top of another plan, I might go look at, at Utah, Alaska, New Hampshire, one of those plans. Actually, even Michigan's plan, uh, uh, pretty good there. I spoke earlier about the first thing you want to do is look at the FAFSA, and we went through that. The next thing I'd like to talk about, though, is looking for scholarships and how to do your search. Many people, when you go for private money, public money is generally going to be the FAFSA or a collection. There's the, there's the common uh, uh, um, uh, application that a lot of uh, 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 schools use. Um, there are some schools will have their own applications for financial aid. You'll fill those out through the school. But when you go get outside money, when you go get private money, a lot of people will go to places like uh, FastWeb as an example. FastWeb is a place you can go look for scholarships. The problem is a lot of this money that you and I hear about that's out there is not national. Like, you know, uh, when Nick and Autumn were going through college, Tylenol was giving money to people and we could maybe get that money. You write an essay. If, uh, if, if Pam were here, who runs our scholarship program, if Pam were here, she'd tell you that, you know what? The, uh, there's tons of people that go for this $400 scholarship, just absolutely tons of people that go for that. The scholarships that end up getting, uh, uh, the money never gets given out is a lot of the local money. And so the way you look at this is through your guidance counselor at your high school, ask your guidance counselor, what may be available because they're in contact with a lot of these local organizations look at some of the local organizations individually groups like rotary vfw as an example um some of the local businesses wherever you work local credit unions sometimes give money if you belong to a local credit union so i may start asking the people at these places high school local civic organizations uh that you'll see at the fourth of july parade whatever that may be um, you probably know the organizations in your town, any affiliations that you have, uh, and those may be national, but they may be, uh, 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 a smaller group of people, uh, society of, uh, automotive engineers, as an example, SAE, uh, may, maybe one beating guy from Detroit. I know that one well, but, uh, whatever groups, smaller groups you belong to are a great place to start. When you're looking, when you, and by the way, both of my kids got local scholarships. My daughter, Autumn, got a bunch of local scholarships and hers were Good Samaritan Awards. She liked to volunteer. She helped out around the town and uh, one of her scholarships was a big surprise. She won a Good Samaritan uh, $500 scholarship that we had no idea even existed um, and they surprised her with it at, at uh at uh, graduation, so that was that was awesome, and was 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 extra extra money. Um, well, not extra money that paid for five hundred bucks, right? How, how many books does five hundred bucks pay for? But it was definitely very helpful. The thing that my daughter did well also later on, and my son applied for but did not get, and this is a key. A lot of the time, when you are a freshman, it's going to be frustrating looking for scholarships because you've got this wide swath of places that you're looking. And there is a chance if you're going it alone that you may not find anything. We have a scholarship program, Pam uh, runs it. I'll talk about that here at the end of our, 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 uh, our time together. I can also answer questions about our scholarship program and, and how it works. But the, 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 the frustrating thing is a lot of people go for scholarships when they're a freshman. And they don't get them, so they quit. The further along the college track your child gets, the more private scholarships become widely available. And there's a really good reason for that, and it's this. When you're a freshman in college, a lot of freshmen don't know what they want to do. They don't know where they're going. They're just exploring. They're learning. But sophomore year, you hone in more junior year, you're getting it together and senior year, you're on final approach to figure out, you know, where you're going. You definitely don't have it all figured out, right? But you do know directionally where you're headed. And in a competitive industry, 
companies will use private scholarships to uh, to recruit you and private foundations will use scholarships to highlight works at, at universities that they support. So as an example, my daughter won through the School of Journalism at the University of Arkansas. She won uh, scholarships twice through the Edsel Ford Foundation. Uh, and that was her junior year and her senior year. She had to apply for those. Had she not applied, she wouldn't have even been considered for those and she wouldn't have gotten them. And a big mistake people make is not going for scholarships junior and senior year in college. You definitely want to do that. Uh, you're leaving, you're leaving, leaving money on the table. Um, thoughts on, on, on Adrian, I might've, I might've missed your question. Let me see. Uh, has COVID affected the number of dollar amounts of scholarships available? Pam would know that. Unfortunately, I don't, I, don't have any data. Don't have any. I haven't seen anything in the news that it's affected that. I I know that uh, schools have been impacted, and I remember uh, Scott Galloway on a on a Westwood One call because uh, he's on Westwood One with us, um, talking about how schools are going to see some reckoning from, you know, having Zoom classes. But now that kids are going back uh, to school in the fall, it sounds like most schools are already planning on being back in the fall uh, that, that we're not, we're not going to see maybe a lot of that change that he predicted may happen. It'll be interesting to see. Um, so I don't know then Adrian, if that's your question here, yes, thoughts on that, or I don't know what uh Scali is. Um, and I may not know. Uh, Tyson says, how do scholarships work for kids that are going to defer attendance to college or of college credit through through high school well the scholarship program you you want to make sure with the fafsa so let's talk about two sides number one with the fafsa um you want to apply the year before you go and you want to try to have it in as early as they'll take it which used to be early february if pam were here she would tell you for those of you that got here late uh pam having some uh technical difficulties and appears is not going to be able to make it today unfortunately but hopefully we're able to give you a lot of this. She and I talked a ton about what we were going to talk about. And of course, this is my favorite area of financial planning. So, but, um, uh, so it, it's based on the date that you're going and you want to make sure that early February that year, you've got the FAFSA in for that coming year. You also want to pay attention to scholarship opportunities that year before. So it's all based on whether you are deferring or not, what time you're actually, when you're actually attending college. So if you're in your forties or fifties and you're going back to school, just the year before is when you're really looking at all of these uh, aid programs, the FAFSA on one side, whatever the college tells you they have that's specific to that, and then private scholarship money on the other. Probably if it's your first year, not going to get a lot of private money, but as I just mentioned, that's going to go up more over time and you'll be more likely to get that later. The, uh, um, I, I will mention this though, Tyson, because you brought it up. Lots of studies show that that gap year is huge, is absolutely huge. Uh, you get some real life experience. You realize what a crappy job looks like. You understand a little bit about life. In fact, uh, studies show that uh, older students' GPAs, just as a group, generally much higher than people that go right from high school to college. They get it. They know why they're there. And I'll say that as a guy that was paying his own way. So once I left the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina, and I wasn't on a track scholarship anymore, paid my own way at Michigan State, taking a couple classes at a time, uh, sometimes full time at 12 credits, sometimes less than full time, uh, just taking a couple classes, trying to get it done and working three jobs. And by the way, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have taken seven years to get my degree. I would have gotten it over with and finished it. But I didn't know how financial aid money worked and I didn't know how scholarship programs worked. And, um, and sadly didn't do what I tell people to do now, which is surround yourself with smart people who can answer those questions. Uh, didn't do any of that. Didn't know it. So I just worked two and three jobs and paid my way through. 
but the uh, but I will say this: during the end of that seven years, when I was working all those crappy jobs, my GPA went through the roof. Totally went through the roof. And my laser focus on what I wanted to do with my life went from all over the place, no clue to man, I I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew uh uh, uh where education was taking me and what was gonna help and what was what was what was not gonna help me. Um and uh, Gertrude says, so everybody's messing with me now. Everybody's talking about Scully and nobody's telling me what it is. So, uh, and I don't want to sit here and look it up. So we can, <laughs> if, uh, if somebody wants to clue me in on that one, I have, I have no idea. Uh, uh, Annette took a gap here. Saved enough to pay a 30 year tuition. And I bet Annette during that year, you, you, you also just grew, right? I mean, the bad jobs that I had just made me so much appreciate when I, uh, when I became a financial planner the first year, it was absolutely horrible. Uh, calling people that you didn't know, we used to do this whole, it was a whole telemarketing thing. Like think about just this old school crap, learning all of these just horrible sales uh, techniques that I just hated. And, um, uh, but I had an appreciation that I was in an air conditioned office and with free coffee and an hour lunch break, which is amazing. It was all fantastic. So, uh, 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 uh much, much, much bit better. Yes. Send your kids to college uh, through the military. Um, shout out to Navy federal Our our. by the way, I'm so happy that they're with us this year. That is, that is a great partnership and I'm glad that they're also helping us. They'll be helping us in the later on to create, create some new content. Uh, uh, Jeff's got a question. Uh, Scholarly is the number one college scholarship app in the world. Uh, very cool. Fantastic. Maybe we should have them on FinTech Friday, huh? We, uh, Gertrude, let's talk to, let's talk to Karen about, about, about learning more. That looks great. Let's talk also about, um, our scholarship program here at the end. So at Stacking Benjamins, we made a decision. We don't do a lot of free resources beyond the uh, beyond the podcast, and the reason isn't that we we want um, we want expensive stuff. I just don't like cheap stuff. I just don't like putting together. I've gone through some of these free things, and free ends up being a come on, right? there ends up being a reason why things are free. And so instead we would rather create things that are valuable and that bring it and, um, and help you with, uh, with the problem, I think in a much more, I'm gonna say, it isn't the right word, but in what I think is a little bit more honest way. So, uh, uh, the Stacking Benjamin Scholarship Program is in affiliation with our friend Pam Andrews. I went out and found the person I know who knows more about scholarship programs than anybody. Uh, she's worked with uh, uh, lots of kids and already has a fantastic track record of finding scholarships. But what I like best about our program is that Pam doesn't do it. There's value in learning how to do stuff yourself and I think if you're a parent and you're listening to this and you have a child that's getting ready to go to, to college, you're sending them to college for life lessons. And I think that the whole scholarship process can be added to those life lessons. So Pam's, Pam's ability to help people with those life lessons is something that I really like. And here's some of the pieces that I like. I like the fact that she teaches them to play to the judge, that when you're going for some of these private scholarships, these foundational grants, you're going to be judged. And so what does the judge want to see? And think about every interview you've had for a job. You have to play to the judge and you have to realize, even though we none of us want to be judged and we don't want to be judgy, in life, there's some judging going on. And knowing that 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 there's some judging going on is a, is a valuable life skill. I remember I was in an early job and uh, I actually told the story on Bobby's podcast. It's the only place I think I've told it besides now. And I, um, I used to wear these really cheap plastic shoes that I got at Payless for 15 bucks. Um, but I was in this thing where this job where I'm wearing a suit uh, all day long. And I finally realized that my shoes 
looked horrible. Nobody told me that because people don't judge, right? But then I went and I changed the shoes and I had like six people, including a guy who I thought of as a mentor, tell me about time you got rid of those cheap shoes. Everybody noticed it. Everybody was judging me to some degree. You got to learn to play to the judge. It just is sadly a part of life. And Pam teaches that. The second thing that I like is you set up your LinkedIn profile because a lot of this stuff happens in, in through LinkedIn and uh, having LinkedIn profile. And, and having, thinking about your social media presence and uh, keeping that presence positive and having it reflect who you really are versus, I mean, all of us know somebody who's on social media saying stuff that they probably shouldn't be saying if they're thinking about their next job. So uh, building that resume from the beginning, I think is also huge. And then the systems of creating your, uh, your, uh, uh, pie, your search for scholarships is also something that I like, you know, life I've learned over time through, uh, not just my jobs, but from my ADD and from, uh, life's hard knocks, you just learn that, man, I need a system. Charisma is not a system. Yelling and screaming is not a system. Wishing things were better is not a system. Everything that works, works because of a system. And so Pam teaches them a system. She doesn't do it for them, teaches them a system. And so I think you get not only the scholarship piece, but you also have those three things, playing to the judge, understanding a, a valuable presence online and, and, and how to create that yourself. But then third, that life is about systems. So the link to our program, which is going to close on Saturday uh, for the spring, stackybedjamins.com forward slash scholarships. So it's stackybedjamins.com forward slash scholarships. And I'll put that on the screen. And if Gertrude, if you can put that in the chat, uh, that would be great. Let me see if I can get this on the screen. And then we're, and then we're good, good to go there. Uh, there's a couple more things here, by the way. Let me... Let me uh, get this and then I'm going to end this with just a few. And it wraps around, but of course it's there. Here, say hey Sarah, how are you? And I saw that, I think it's your son uh, uh, got uh, admitted to that horrible school in Ann Arbor which is a really good school and congratulations. But as you know, Sarah, not my, not, <laughs> I, not my favorite place. Uh, actually a beautiful place. Who am I kidding? Uh, but congratulations on that. Um, a couple more things that I, I, I have here from the agenda when um, uh, Pam and I were, were, were setting this up. Uh, if you have a junior or younger in high school, time to learn about the FAFSA. Um, start learning about that. Also start visiting colleges. You can, you need to go visit. I never did this. You need to go visit quite a few colleges. I think that that does two things. Number one is you start to compare different aspects of, of, of college and their sales pitches guys. If you've never been through one of these, they are sales pitches. So be ready for sales pitches, but you start listening to other people that are on these tours and you hear about the questions to ask you, the student. If it's not you, the student with you starts learning about how competitive this process is. And so the quicker you get in there and talk about that, the better, um, because, um, because it is competitive. Um, and if your goal is college, then, then there's, then that's valuable. Another thing to do, by the way, is start talking about the money involved with college. You know, uh, at at one point we looked at for my son, we looked at Carnegie Mellon University, we looked at uh, MIT, we looked at uh, William and Mary. There were a few private schools, and like you know, we had Ron Lieber. This is a great book, by the way, on the show recently. But Ron Lieber, the price you pay for college. Ron Lieber on the show. And while he even said that the price tag for college for private school is not as high as it looks, and they often have these foundations that give you money. Um, my son couldn't articulate 
what the difference was going to be for him between going to Carnegie Mellon, which the price tag was going to be here, even after scholarships was going to be here, and the University of Texas, which was going to be here, and Texas A&M Texarkana. He could articulate why he didn't want to go to Texas A&M Texarkana, which would have been a fantastic choice, I think. Uh, often the local school is a great choice but he didn't want that choice. Um, and when we actually sat down and looked at the price tag of those three, uh, his, his head came out of the clouds very quickly and um, settled on, I think, what was, was the right, right choice for him, uh, University of Texas at, 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 at Austin. Um, and, and Peter, I love this. You know, t t Texas A&M, Texarkana, right around the corner, could have lived at home, saved money, saved me a bunch of money. I know some of the professors there, Richie, who's worked on our team for a long time, uh, has been has been um, uh, 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 went there and got a great education. Uh, Jennifer's with us and said, if uh, students are getting college credit and will credit wise be a junior in college, but physically be a freshman, should they be applying as a freshman or a junior? That is a question for the uh, the institutions that they're applying to. Because frankly, Jennifer, I I don't know the answer to that. Um, when I transferred from the Citadel, uh, I actually, my credits transferred great. And I, and to your point, I was, I was, um, uh, uh, transferring in with a bunch of, uh, a bunch more credits than I thought that I was. Cause man, did the Citadel, uh, credits transfer well, but I do know that that's different for every school. And I know for my kids having some college credit while they were in high school, that those are accepted differently at different institutions. So when you visit schools or you're talking to schools, ask them, how, do, how does my college credit? And it is an example at uh, Texas High, Texarkana, Texas High School. There's, they had two different programs. They had dual credit. Dual credit programs were high school and college, but it was only for certain colleges. And then AP credit, which was much more universally accepted. So depending on what type of high school credit it was, you'll also have a different answer there too. So uh, those are those are a couple of of the of the things. Pam made it, and we're just finishing. Uh, uh, Pam had the. Um, Back, backstage backstage link but but we're actually finishing up pam so i'll just talk i'll just talk to you talk to you later hope our technical issues were okay we um i think we i think i didn't embarrass you pam that's what i was hoping to do was to not embarrass you but it's uh stackingbenjamins.com forward slash uh, scholarships uh to know more we close on saturday and um and if you're looking to Pack Hunt and those three things that we talked about, uh, we'd be happy. We'd love to have you join us um, for the scholarships search. Uh, back to now away from college, two quick things. Number one, uh, for those of you that are new uh, that or that came in before my open, we are going to do next Friday. Just found this out yesterday and firmed it up today. We are going to do a live roundtable not a recording, not a live show, but we will be doing the, the recording of the show live, meaning you're going to see the backstage us making the sausage next Friday, 3.30 Eastern. I'll have more stuff in the, in the Facebook uh, group, the basement. So if you're not in our Facebook group, you'll see it there and in, in, in the stacker. We'll tell people in those two places. So stackybenjamins.com forward slash stacker to be on our email list. And then also stackybenjamins.com uh, 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 forward slash basements, the quickest way to get to the Facebook group, because I know it's a little bit of a longer URL without that. So those those are two biggies, um, uh, uh, big ways to find out not just that, but other things going on. But we've done this before, and I'll tell you two things. Number one is you're going to see how how boring it can be uh, sometimes when we're making a show. Like we're just getting our notes together. We're getting stuff going. And it's you'll also see how much more start, stop, start, stop it is. So if you like watching the show get made, we're going to be making it as part of uh, finance, uh, personal finance podcast week. Podbean, which is a big podcasting company, is putting this on. Uh, Paula Pant is also on a panel. Um, 
uh, and she's going to be on our show. It'll be Paula, Len, OG, and I, and I'm not sure about uh, about neighbor Doug. Often when we record, we um, we just have uh, neighbor Doug's stuff in front of us, but we don't we don't have Doug uh, there with us just to pull back the curtain a little bit. Uh, man, I wish it was sausage and pancakes. So that's that is uh, that. We're also going to have a special show. I just found out about uh, small business. Our off week, the beginning week of May, I found out that we are going to have a live, uh, or, or excuse me, we're going to have an extra show that week. So when usually we're off for a week, we're actually going to have, we will still have three rewind shows. We're going to have four shows in our off week that week. So if you need more Stacky Benjamins, I have no idea how you, why you need more, but if you do need more, we're going to be bringing it that, uh, that, that first week. Yeah, my thumb just, that was, that, that was wild. My thumb just cramped up when I was in the middle of that. Uh, and somebody asked me another question about my book and I can talk about that and then we'll say goodbye guys. Um, unless you've got other stuff, which is, uh, so for those of you who don't know that I'm, that I'm writing a book. Oh, thanks for this question, Jeff, that I'm writing a book. Uh, the, the chapters were finished at the beginning of uh, February. My co-author is Emily Guy Birkin. She has, uh, about, um, she has four books already that you'll find at your local bookstore. Um, and I was very happy that she would co-write this book with me. It is a book that is a lot like our show. It's a funny walk through um, what you need to know about your money. It's meant as a modern money management guide. And, um, and the name of the book is Stacked. So the book is called Stacked. And it will be out next January. We have, we, uh, so we send it into our editor at the beginning of February, Nina, who's amazing. Nina sent it back to us uh, a couple of weeks ago. We worked through all the chapters and mostly minor changes, which she was very happy with. And we were very happy with uh, some big changes to the introduction. Um, but besides that, and, and making, uh, we've got my mom, uh, makes appearances all the way through the book and making those a little more consistent. We also have uh, interviews in most of the chapters to end the chapters, interviews from the show, like snippets of interviews that we did that are that kind of relate to that chapter. So you'll get a, a feel of, of, of the, the podcast while you're uh, reading the book. We had a couple chapters where we don't have those. So we're going to add a couple more. Nina really liked them. Uh, our early readers, Kyle and Cheryl, uh, also Mary Lou, also really like the uh, those at the end of the chapter. They kind of put a put a nice end on every chapter. Um, so we're getting the graphics together, getting this second round of edits. I've been told that once we finish this, which is in two weeks, a week and a half, in a week and a half, uh, we'll have that done. Um, we'll then have an another round with our main editor probably will be fine. And then it goes to copy editors who are just looking at sentence structure. They're not looking anymore for the contents of the book. They're just looking at, at, you know, uh, uh, do we have any misspellings? Um, and you know, you can look at these books all day and, and never find a misspelling. So it's, it's, it's coming, coming soon. Um, in, in, uh, in January, it'll be the first week of January. You're going to hear about it way more than you want to. I can also tell you this, we're going, to, we're going to do a 25 city, there will be a 25 city tour. So hopefully I'm coming to a city near you. Most of those cities, we're just going to hang out. And uh, we may talk a little bit about behind the scenes. OG is going to try to go to a bunch of them. Uh, we're also going to, Emily, uh, my co-host is going to go to several, although she has kids at home. If, if you're close to Milwaukee, you have a better chance of seeing Emily. Uh, we're also going to peel off uh, seven cities, hopefully, that's our goal, seven cities where we will do a live show at a comedy club, just like our comedy club tour a few years ago, we'll do another comedy. That was so damn fun. And for those of you that were there, um, uh, we had a blast and the shows got better as we, as we went. So uh, I can also tell you that we are definitely doing a live show with Economy uh, in Cincinnati at the, in November. So go to economy, uh, economy dot what's Diana's 
uh, economyconference.com to sign up for Economy. I know they have an early bird deal going on right now. So I'll be speaking at Economy and I'll also be a part of that. Um, I'm also going to go to Joshua Tree for the, um, I'm going to Joshua Tree for the uh, Camp Phi uh, there this year. And I don't have the dates, but if you just look up Camp Phi, and if you've been to a Camp Phi, you know that it's not about the speakers, um, even though I'll be giving a talk there. Uh, I believe it's in September, October, maybe October, um, early October. I uh, It is much more about hanging out with like-minded people, and it's really fun. So I'll be, I'll be there. Rena, I would love to come to Sicily. I'm game on. That would be fantastic. Uh, just... just Fan, fantastic. When we do the world tour, Rena, that'll be that'll be great. We we were just talking about how we want to come to, back to Italy, and haven't been to Sicily. What's funny is, is on and this may give you a little eye roll, but when I was when, when we go to Disney, we will go to what's the Italian restaurant at uh, Disney that looks in 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 a um, uh, Disney Springs that. It's an awesome restaurant. It's a big place. Looks like an old 1950s uh, 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 airport terminal. It's just it's 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 a great theming. But anyway, we've had the same waiter twice, and she's from Sicily. And uh, and then we actually had a woman that was a roommate another time we went there because we said, oh, the, w- we usually have this woman who's from Sicily. She's like, that's my roommate. And anyway, then we have this wine from Sicily while we're there. So. Um, uh, and just, I don't know, the only people I've met from Sicily and, and very, very cool people. I liked it when, I, I don't know if you guys caught Joseph Rosendo when he was on, uh, from travel scope, uh, back in, was that in February that Joseph was on, but I love the people. And I love what he said about, you know, don't be a fly on the wall and just go to see the statues and the, that stuff is all cool, but go meet the people. It's so good. And that, that took me a while to to, to kind of, kind of learn. Uh, I say Joe reads the first chapter live to kick it off. <laughs> uh, it, it, it will be, it will be available on audio. Um, that's another step in the process. So if you like audio books, uh, I'll be narrating the audio and I'm not sure if uh, Emily's going to be narrating it with me or not. But, uh, but it will be for me. And I have been told that the chapters will end with longer snippets from these interviews. So in the book, the written form, they're going to be short because they're edited, but, uh, but they're not edited on the audio book. So the audio book will be a longer interview at the end of every, at the end of every chapter with these different people that are in the book. And we have um, right now in the book, we have uh, Gene Chatsky, Jill Schlesinger, um, Laura Adams, um, uh, it's funny because, uh, a Tiffany Alice is in the book. Um, uh, uh, Amori Teharapur is in the book. We, we talked to her about negotiation, um, and I'm blanking, but there's, but th- there are quite a few, uh, of your favorite financial experts. Uh, Gabby Dunn is in the book. Um, oh, and, um, Oh my goodness. I'm blanking again. The, the, the great behavioral, uh, guy. Oh shoot. Uh, and now I'm panicking because I can't think of his, because I can't think of his name. Anyway, a lot of different people at the end of every chapter. All right, guys. Oh, you live on the volcano. Okay. I'm, uh, gotta go guys. We're going to visit Rena. Actually, I don't think we can get there yet. Can we? It's three o'clock. We've been going for an hour. Thanks for hanging out. Once again, if you're, if you'd like to join us, you have till Saturday, uh, join, uh, Pam and I, uh, stackybenjamins.com forward slash scholarships. All right, stackers. Thanks for hanging out with us and have a great